Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for October 15th. October 15th is the 288th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 289th in leap years, with 77 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is nihilism. Nihilism comes to us from a Latin root that means nothing. I'm not saying it doesn't mean anything, I'm saying it means nothing. We use the word nihilism as a noun that can refer to a complete denial of all established authority and institutions, or a type of anarchy, lawlessness, a state of lawlessness and disorder usually resulting from a failure of government, or a revolutionary doctrine that advocates destruction of the social system for its own sake. Nihilism can also refer to the delusion that things, or everything, including the self, do not exist, a sense that everything is unreal. Different forms of nihilism hold variously that human values are baseless, that life is meaningless, that knowledge is impossible, or that some set of entities does not exist. And I gotta tell you, it sounds pretty hopeless to me, and I'm glad I'm not a nihilist. <laughs> I'd like to take a moment to mention that links to my research are included in the show notes. I ask you to go ahead and click that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with others. You could do that with a link in your email messaging or social media. And remember that we have a list of the Day in History series in the show notes or up in the iCards if you're on YouTube. If you're on Vimeo, just look in the show notes for that link. Alrighty, I guess that's it. So we're going to start with the birthday of the Roman poet Virgil, born October 15th, 70 BC. That was a long time ago. He wrote several works, but is probably best known for the Aeneid, a story about a Trojan who traveled to Italy and became the ancestor of the Romans. This work consists of 9,896 lines in dactylic hexameter. Dactylic hexameter. So there's actually a meter to this poem. Really, Virgil? Really? Alrighty, I did find a video about dactylic hexameter, <laughs> to which I've placed a link in the show notes with a shortcut right to an example of the pronunciation, and you are welcome. <laughs> the Siege of Vienna was an attempt by the Ottoman Empire to capture the city of Vienna, Austria, in 1529. And October 15, 1529, the siege ended when Austria routed the invading Ottoman forces ending its European expansion. Adoption of the Gregorian calendar began on October 15, 1582, eventually leading to near-universal adoption. The Montgolfier brothers, Montgolfier, we're going to put that in the little thing down below and someone can let me know if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Montgolfier brothers, Joseph, Michel, and Jacques Etienne, were members of a family of French paper manufacturers. These two are best known for the Montgolfier style hot air balloon, which by the way was inspired by the observation of laundry drying over a fire. The fire generated heat, of course, which created a warm air pocket which rose and caught the laundry and caused it to raise up in the air. Joseph had observed this phenomenon and while he didn't quite understand the science of it all, it did occur to him to experiment further with the notion. He built about a one meter square box, covered it with fabric, and much to his delight, I'm sure, <laughs> pretty easily got it to lift off with, with hot air. That success in hand, he prevailed upon his brother Etienne to help him build a larger one. A few trials later, on October 15, 1783, the Montgolfier brothers' hot air balloon took the first humans aloft. The first human flight was piloted by a chemistry and physics teacher, Jean-Francois de Rosier, accompanied by the Marquis d'Arlande. My French might be a little sketchy. You can let me know. <laughs> Queen Marie Antoinette of France was tried and convicted of treason on October 15, 1793. 
There's a lot of French history today. Napoleon began his exile on St. Helena in the South Atlantic Ocean on October 15, 1815. This is the birthday of Frederick Nietzsche, born October 15, 1844. That fella had him one ginormous mustache. Wowzers. He started out studying classical philology, which is the study of classical writings, but then he turned to philosophy. He was a brilliant guy. I think the thing that most people think of in regards to Nietzsche is his treatment of nihilism. Seems like he was a different sort of guy most of his life anyway, and in 1889, when he was about 44, he spun off hard. He created a public disturbance for which he got a talking to by the police. After that, he started sending short, strange writings to his friends. These writings have come to be known as the Madness Letters. Some of them just strange, some of them scary. After that, he landed in a couple of mental asylums, and then in the care of his sister, and then his mother, who took care of him until he passed away at the age of 55. The Edison Electric Light Company began operation on October 15, 1878. There's also a lot of air history today. On October 15, 1910, a vehicle named Starship America was launched from New Jersey in the first attempt to cross the Atlantic via powered aircraft. Now, this was not an airplane like airplanes as we know them today. This was a non-rigid balloon type aircraft that had some kind of power to help. steer and motivate it. This is the birthday of Mario Puzo, born October 15th, 1920. Novelist and screenwriter, he's best known for having written The Godfather. He lived to the age of 79. This is the birthday of Lee Iacocca, born October 15, 1924. He was an automobile executive and a significant factor in the development of the Ford Mustang and the Pinto cars in the 1960s, and then reviving the Chrysler Corporation in the 1980s. Lee Iacocca lived to the age of 94. On October 15, 1928, the airship Graf Zeppelin completed its first transatlantic flight and landed in Lakehurst, New Jersey. Now this one was a rigid hydrogen-filled airship. Graf Zeppelin made 590 flights, totaling over a million miles. It was withdrawn from service after the Hindenburg disaster. I got two air stories right together and they're completely different and I don't want to get them mixed up. <laughs> On October 15, 1932, Tata Airlines, later renamed Air India, made its first flight. The New York Municipal Airport, later renamed LaGuardia Airport, was dedicated on October 15, 1939. This is the birthday of actress Penny Marshall, born October 15, 1943. She was an actor, director, and producer with a significant filmography. I first remember her from the TV show Laverne and Shirley. She had something to do with a great many other great projects throughout her career. Penny Marshall lived to the age of 75. This is the birthday of baseball great Jim Palmer. Born October 15, 1945, he played with the Baltimore Orioles, actually pitched a no-hitter, and was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1990. Still alive, Jim Palmer turned 75 in 2020. This is the birthday of Tito Jackson, born October 15, 1953. The third child of the very musical Jackson family, he turns 67 in 2020. Hurricane Hazel devastated the eastern seaboard of North America on October 15, 1954. The first modern computer language, Fortran, was first shared with coding community on October 15, 1956. Fortran, by the way, is an acronym taken from the term formula translation. Fortran. This is the birthday of Emeril Lagasse, born October 15, 1959. He could be my little brother. Having spent part of my childhood in New Orleans, Emerald caught my attention when he came on TV with Creole and Cajun cooking. He gave us BAM 
and kick it up a notch and turn 61 in 2020. The Black Panther Party was created by Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seal on October 15, 1966. Wayne Gretzky became the all-time leading point scorer in the National Hockey League on October 15, 1989. And I don't follow hockey, but I sure remember that. Soviet Union leader Mikhail Gorbachev was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize on October 15, 1990 for his efforts to lessen Cold War tensions and open up his nation. Thank you, Gorby. On October 15, 2001, NASA's Galileo spacecraft passed within 112 miles of Jupiter's moon Io. That's pretty close. And I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something you didn't know before. I know I sure did. I always do. As always, links to my research are included in the show notes, along with the playlist for the This Day in History playlist. <laughs> A link for this, this Day in History playlist, which will also be up in the iCards if you're watching on YouTube. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with others. You can do that with a link in your email, messaging, or social media. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Hope I can edit that in. Come on now, you can do it. Okay, let's see if we could just get that all the way through. Wouldn't that be awesome? That sounds like a pretty ambitious project. Okay, just leave that part out. Not the first day, but the birthday. I guess the birthday is the first day. This is what happens when you don't clean up your script. <laughs> we might leave that part out. <laughs> I don't know how all that's going to go together, or if it's even going to make it to the video. We'll just see. That's not going to go. Yeah, we're going to cut those out. And that'll all be laying on the cutting room floor. <laughs> so I'll just do that whole thing over. <laughs> that might not make it into the video. We'll see. Changing it up. <laughs>